Hey everybody, we'll just let uh, a few more people get joined up and then we'll get uh, started on this one for a redo of yesterday, hopefully a, uh, in the words of Tosh.0, a web, a web redemption of the disaster that was yesterday. It looks like we got about uh, 20 of you right now. We'll just go ahead and go with uh, that to be uh, good enough for today. Uh, so, hey, everybody, welcome back to uh, Mission Control. A nice, uh, sunshiny day here in Denver, Colorado. I hope it's nice wherever you happen to be, even if we all are stuck inside. At least it's pretty to look outside the windows and see it looking nice. Uh, as usual, we'll still play our uh, Mission Control drinking game, where every time I forget to switch screens, you guys take a drink. Since it is Friday, it's uh, okay to start drinking this early, right? Or late, depending on where you are. Uh, today, we're going to go back over the Shapes Engine, uh, to make, remake the video from yesterday, since we did such a terrible job of it yesterday. Uh, we've had computer pro networking problems, and uh, those have all been corrected here, so we shouldn't have any issues in that sense. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we go along. Uh, Mr. Sam is there to help answer them uh, if I take a minute to see them. Otherwise, just wait a moment, and I will uh, answer them as we can on the stream also. Uh, so we have a little bit of fun with that. We will still do our 4 o'clock stream, uh, our 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time stream uh, on Masters and uh, the disk menu also. But for now, let's get into the Shapes Engine. Uh, shape is a pre-made effect that runs on an attribute. An attribute is relative, so depending on where the attribute currently is, the shape will run using that as a center point. Uh, so let's say if we had a center point, uh, we're doing a circle, uh, per se, and we've got our lights pointing uh, at the audience uh, and with the center of the, the beam on front of house. And when we start that circle, it's going to make a beam. It's going to make the circle around that center point. If we take the center point and kick it off to stage right, uh, the center point will, would, would be over there just pointing off to... Uh, stage right, but it'll use that center point uh, as the uh, place to center the circle around. Uh, group layout and fixture order come into play. Like I've said before, fixture order matters. It plays into the way everything works in uh, Titan. Super important to uh, help with that. Uh, this is the first shape engine that Avalas created, and users of our Pro range will be familiar with many of its features. Uh, creating a shape generator effect, uh, select some fixtures, and then uh, from the soft keys, uh, choose shapes and effects, then shape generator, then create, uh, then choose a category, then the shape you want. Uh, the wheels will then control uh, side speeds and spread. They can also be set to control offset, uh, spread and phase, and beats and cycles, and we'll get into all of those. So before we talk about beats, let's uh, poke around just some basic stuff. So we'll switch back over here to our mobile display. And here we'll see we've got the same basic show file we've been using so far, which is just 10 BMFLs and six PARCANs. 
uh, set up with a little bit of a uh, capture file and I actually have a full capture file set up today so we might show that on the screen at some times at the same time also. So first thing we'll do is go ahead and select our BMFLs and we're going to throw a locate on them so we can see them and because I know we're going to use a, uh, a circle effect here to show off to start with we go to our position and we're going to tilt them out a little bit so they're kind of uh, not pointing straight down so we can actually see our circle. And then we'll go uh, shapes and effects uh, keyframe shape, or, yeah, sorry, not keyframe shape, we're doing regular shapes. And actually, I'm going to take my zoom down to uh, small on these fixtures, too, to make this a little easier to see. Uh, shapes and effects, shape generator, create. Uh, then we can choose from a category here. We can also see that uh, the uh, position shapes window has popped up for us since we have our position attribute uh, selected down here. I usually do it from soft keys menu. Uh, it's kind of whatever uh, fits your flavors, what makes you happy. Uh, but where I like to do it from the soft keys, maybe it's just because that's the way it always used to be and that's what I'm used to. So we'll choose pan and tilt and then we're going to choose circle. And you can see that our fixtures start moving in a circle. Now, if we look down here on our soft key, or our uh, wheels display area, we can see we've got speed, size, and spread. Speed, obviously, a uh, lower number make go slower, higher number make go faster. Uh, we can also click on the uh, where the value is itself and actually set it. Say we wanted to set it to uh, 20 BPM exactly. We can type in 20 and then uh, hit 20. We see that it sets that exactly to that. Size, same. A uh, larger size makes for a bigger circle. Uh, zero, smaller size makes for a smaller circle. Um, we'll go ahead and set our size also to 20. And then spread. Spread uh, sets how the uh, circle spreads between uh, your fixtures. So in this case, since we've got 10 fixtures, I'm just going to take that up to 10 just to show what that looks like. And you can see that the circle is spreading between uh, those 10 fixtures. If we hit our uh, adjust uh, phase, spread, and offset, uh, we can adjust the phase, the spread, and the offset of our fixtures. Uh, fa phase and spread are very closely related. Uh, as Sam said yesterday, and gave me a good way to start explaining this, phase uh, and spread are, again, closely related, but phase gives you a more finite control where uh, spread's a little more uh, uh, clunky control, so to speak, a little, little less fine, uh, but we can use the phase to give us more fine-tuning. And offset adjusts the, uh, the amount of offset between each of those uh, spreads. I can give you even uh, different-looking effects uh, by messing about with that. Um, if we click uh, beats and uh, beats and cycles, we'll go back to our slides for a moment and talk about those. Uh, the adjust beats and cycle option allows you to set on the wheels how the program speed will trigger the shape uh, and how many times the shape will run. Beats. Uh, the beats option uh, defaults to beats equal one, which makes the shape run at normal speed. However, higher numbers will divide the count. For example, beats equal four uh, will make the shape run at a quarter of the speed. This is really useful when synchronizing different types of shapes uh, which are running together. Click in the middle of the wheel, uh, wheel roller image on screen or pressing the at key uh, on, a hard, on a hard console. Allows you to type in the number for the beats parameter. You can also show the different options for the beats uh, match to spread. This sets the beat count to the same as the current spread uh, setting for the shape. This is useful when using dimmer shapes uh, with movement shapes as it will make each fixture turn on for a full cycle of the movement shape. Uh, the custom option uh, uh, resets the value option to the last entered value. And before we go back to our uh, machine here, we'll talk about cycles. Uh, cycles option allows you to set how many times the shape will run. By default, it's set to infinity, which means the shape will continue to run until you stop it. Uh, if it's set to a fixed number, the shape will stop by itself after running after that number of cycles. You can type in the number instead of uh, using the wheels by clicking in the middle of the wheel or roll image or pressing the at key on a hard console. If you're typing in the number, you can enter part cycles, for example, uh, 1.5. So let's switch back over to our mobile here. And we see we've still got that same old circle running. Uh, here we hit put our beats. Now again, beats puts a divisor in there. So if I wanted, I usually, my default go-to, my personal default go-to for a circle is going to be a, a beats divisor of four. That way it takes four beats to complete a whole circle. So one, two, three, four. So if I'm doing a, uh, uh, just for ease of math, we'll do an 80 BPM uh, every 20 beats uh, would be a quarter of a... Uh, uh, so, sorry, back. Wow, completely spaced that one out. Uh, it would take 80 beats to complete the circle, so every uh, 20 beats would be a quarter of a circle. I hope that makes uh, sense there. 
Uh, we can see that here. If we go back to our speed, and we'll set it instead of 20 BPM, we'll set it to uh, 80. And we'll see now we get the same speed it was getting a minute ago before we put our uh, our beat divider on there. Cycles again is how many uh, times it's going to run uh, the shape. Right now it's set to infinity. Uh, we can set that to uh, we'll set it to five and set our cycles to that. Now we'll see that it stops. Uh, if we wanted to see it run again, what we do is we go here to our edit key on our uh, soft keys here and then uh, restart shapes and it'll restart it and they'll run it five times and then stop. We'll give it a second to do that. And we see we did the five uh, five times uh, through and then stopped. Uh, if we set it to uh, 1.5, do a short one just so that uh, we can show a little faster, we'll see that it'll do it 1.5 times and then come to a stop. So it did one and a half circles and then came back and stopped. Uh, thanks for posting that up again, Sam. Uh, I'm going to have to commit exactly what you've typed to memory uh, so I can say it that way because I love the way you uh, explain that personally. So uh, with that, let's, uh, so, so we got Beats and Cycles in there now. Uh, let's talk back to our slides for a quick second. Uh, speed and size affect each other. Uh, motors can only move so fast, so, you know, particularly in moving heads nowadays. Back when we had moving mirrors, you could make a really big circle really go really fast. But nowadays, uh, moving heads, they can only move so quickly. Even something really fast like a Sharpie can still only go so fast. Uh, so sometimes if you adjust your speed, sometimes you get to muck about with your size to make it look right for to get the look you're exactly after. And vice versa, if you adjust your size, sometimes you get to adjust your speed to get the same look that you were after. Uh, the sub, if the selected fixture has sub uh, fixtures cells in it, uh, you will, there will be an option to uh, run the shape on the main fixture, keeping the cells identical, or spread across the sub fixture slash cells. The options are run on sub fixtures, cells are ignored, fixture operates as one block. Run on sub fixtures linear, the cells are used in numerical order. A run on sub fixtures uh, group, the layout of the cells is used as programmed in the layout editor for the group. And then we can simply record this as we would any other playback. Uh, I'm going to set our cycles back to infinity, and we'll switch back to our uh, mobile display. And we can see that we've got it uh, running in in uh, circle. Next, we'll throw up our uh, our capture view there also. Let's you guys take a look see at that running uh, there too. And then we can go ahead and say we're happy with this. Uh, we can simply hit uh, record, and then an empty play. We're going to go playback to you here, so we've got some empty playbacks. And we'll throw it right here. And uh, double check our record mode there. Okay, yes, I did have it in fixture. Uh, so we'll hit clear. And we'll exit out of that. So now if we uh, fire this, we get our circle uh, effect here. If, uh, let's talk about editing a shape. Uh, Editing a shape is two ways to do it. Uh, you can bring it back into the program or using include. I uh, then go back into our shape menu and select a shape generator, then edit. We'll see that and then uh, we'll do that. Actually, let's do that and then we'll come back and talk about live shape editing. So we'll say that we, uh, you know, this is great and dandy and all, but uh, maybe we've got our, our speed uh, just all kinds of wrong. And uh, we want to, or uh, actually, let's say that uh, our size isn't right on it and we want to edit it or. Uh, maybe add a color effect into it also. Let's, let's actually, let's go with adding a color effect. We'll do something a little more fancy than that. So the easiest way to do that is we can go ahead and we can leave it on or off. We'll turn it off to make it a little easier. We'll hit include and then hit the blue button of that. And we see that as we use include before, it pulls everything in, including uh, since it was recorded in fixture mode, intensity, position, color, gobo, beam, effect, special, and FX. In this case, FX would be our uh, shape. And then uh, we can go to the shapes effects menu uh, shape generator, then edit, and then we can select which shape we want to edit. If we had more than one, in this case, our programmer circle, and we could adjust its speed or its size. We'll take its size, make it a little bigger. Actually, let's set that to we'll do it hard button, we'll do it 25. And let's say we want to add another effect on top of it. So then we can click create and then color, and uh, we'll do everybody's favorite rainbow. 
when I use the rainbow effect, I like to go to my colors and set them all to 50%. And then it gives you, technically gives you more uh, colors since it's going up and down from uh, 0 to 100 in our color there. So yes, this is extremely disgusting looking and I'm sure somebody right now is crying for what I have made on this screen. Uh, but that's, you know, hey, we're having a little bit of fun, right? Uh, so then we could uh, record this to either a new playback if we wanted. Uh, we could record here and put it on a new playback or if we did record here. Uh, I would usually do uh, replace rather than merge because then technically uh, sometimes with merge you can end up with having two circles on the same one. So I would use replace. And we can then hit clear and we can test our playback and see that we now have our disgusting color and circle running all at the same time. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Sam. Sometimes you got to just do the rainbow, brother. Sometimes you just got to. Uh, we can see that we have it there. So... Uh, let's switch back and let's talk about live shape editing. Uh, live shape editing, uh, you can use the connect queue key, then shape on your tribute banks. The soft key will display the shapes in the current queue that is fired. You can select all of them or just one and then hit the shape key again. And adjust options will appear on the soft keys, allowing you to change the attributes such as size, uh, phase spread, and et cetera. Live, these uh, changes are automatically saved to the playback. So we'll kick back, back over to our mobile again. Since we have this one running with two shapes, makes it even perfect to even see this a little bit better. If we hit the Connect Q key down here, we'll see that our Shapes button in our Tributes Bank uh, starts blinking. If we had a, you would see the same thing on a full console. So if we click that, uh, then we can see that we've got uh, in Q11, here we've got a circle and a rainbow running. Uh, so we can pick one or the other. Let's go ahead and just click, uh, we'll turn off the, uh, uh, the circle, we'll edit just the rainbow. And then we click the shape button again. We now see that on our wheels, we've got size spread and speed, as well as uh, phase spread and offset and beats and cycles. So we'll take our beats and cycles. Uh, and it's actually set to four also uh, already. So let's do our, uh, well, let's muck about. Let's slow our color rainbow down. Let's slow it down to 20 BPM. Why did it slow down our circle too? It should not have. So we do hmm, why is it adjusting both? It should only be adjusting one. I'm not sure exactly why it's adjusting both right now. Probably just to uh, make my life uh, look silly here on stream. Uh, but we can see we can adjust it. Uh, so we'll take, we can take it back down to 20 just so we can see that. Uh, so we see it goes slow. If we hit clear. If we drop this uh, playback down and we bring it back up, we can see that it's keeping uh, that same speed uh, in it now because it automatically saved it. So uh, take a short pause while I have a uh, sip here and give you guys a, a chance to ask any questions uh, that, and I'll see if we can do uh, some stuff live uh, from your questions. Yes, Corey, it's going to go back to the, uh, uh, well, back to the center point that the circle in this in this case was running. It was going to go back to that uh, that point uh, because that's where the shape uh, is originating from is the center point of uh, where we were programming it from. Yeah, I was able to fix the uh, external visualizer lag issue. Uh, it was a networking issue on our end. Uh, well, on my end, I had one of my uh, Ethernet adapters uh, took a dive on the uh, Mac doing the uh, streaming here, so I was able to fix that.
So I don't think we have uh, many questions coming up on our regular uh, shape gen today. Uh, yes, yeah, Eve, I'd make them with uh, separate uh, playbacks to be able to do that. Uh, you can't link a, a playback because you connected only one uh, rate master. Uh, you can't connect a multiple playbacks to a or one playback to multiple uh, rate masters. However, what you could do is uh, I believe well, hmm, I might be saying this wrong. Uh, with playback groups, uh, I think you can make it fire more than one at a time. Or can we only turn them off with playback groups. I haven't played with it enough yet. But I think if, with playback groups, we can have it fire multiple at the same time. Then you're really only firing one. Uh, or you could do it with a queue list and have uh, have them auto follow. So you'd have multiple playbacks fire at once and then uh, be able to control them with the separate masters. I hope that makes sense, Steve. Uh, yes, e, uh, ERO, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name, my brother, uh, I, and I hate for messing up because I hate having my, main, my name messed up. Uh, is there a way to have the uh, habit more fade in? Uh, the way to handle that, uh, way, at least the way I used to do it, would be with the uh, setting the playback to be uh, size on fader, and we'll go ahead and actually pop over here and take a show of that. So we see here, we see if we pop this in, they kind of uh, pop into that pretty quickly. Uh, let's do it here with the fast one. Uh, if we fire it in, we see they kind of jump in. All uh, we can do is go to playback options, select our playback, and then go to effects, and then uh, put our shape size on fader. And now, if we see, as we, if we start to bring, as we start to bring it up, our intensity is snapping all straight up because it doesn't have an intensity value in it. Uh, but I usually don't put intensity in my shape uh, playbacks. I generally have intensity uh, on intensity masters, which we'll talk about later today. Uh, so that's that's usually not a problem. But you can see as it starts to fade in, as I slowly bring, let me do it with the, the real fader since I have a Titan Mobile uh, connected here. And we can see as I slowly start bringing it up, I can make it slowly fade in as slow as I want to move the fader or as quickly as I choose to move the fader. Hope that answers your question, sir. So any other questions on our uh, regular shape generator? If not, we'll get started into uh, keyframe shapes. So we'll step into keyframe shapes here. A uh, unique shape engine has been added to Titan. It's called Keyframe Shapes. Uh, this enables you to have complete, uh, to create uh, shapes using multiple layers and have complete control of editing transitions and relative timings. Uh, when creating a keyframe shape, it's best to work one attribute per layer. Uh, click Add Frame for each step. Uh, click finish recording frames to finish uh, and bring up the effect editor. Quick build allows you to, to build uh, from palettes quickly. Cycles lets you set how many times a shape uh, runs. Uh, keyframe shapes can be run on sub fixtures, on fixtures with cells uh, within the group or linear. Uh, when creating a keyframe shape, uh, select some fixtures, then shapes and effects, then keyframe shape, then create the soft menu. 
Uh, soft keys menu will show uh, add frame. We'll add a frame to the current layer. Frame number shows the current frame you are recording. Record mode allows you to select the mode you wish to record your frame. Uh, playbacks display. Oh, excuse me. Uh, will display or hide playbacks. Uh, auto locate dimmer will automatically locate the dimmer on the fixtures so you can view the attributes you are using. Uh, finish recording frames will take you to the effect editor window or you can view and edit your keyframe shape. Let's see what our next slide is here. And I think we're going to switch over. Yep, we'll switch over to our mobile display here and uh, have a quick poke over here. Uh, so if I go ahead and uh, select my BMFLs, and I'm just going to throw a locate on them real quick just so I've got them pointing at 50 50. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and just uh, clear that and then select them again. And then shapes and effects, keyframe shape, create. And here I can see on my soft keys here, I've got add frame, uh, a frame number. In this case, one, since we haven't actually recorded a frame yet. Uh, record mode, either channel or quick build. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, playbacks display hidden or visible. Uh, we'll show that again in a moment, uh, what that does. Uh, auto locate dimmer on, so we can automatically locate our dimmer or not. Uh, finish recording frames with finish and taking us into our effect editor. So we'll step back up here and change our record mode to uh, quick build here. And you'll see that our uh, record frames went away because it's going to automatically add frames for every time we uh, click a uh, palette. In this case, we'll do it with our position palette. So we'll go ahead and make this one one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven frames. And we see here that it added our uh, playbacks here, or added each frame down on our playbacks area. That's what this one button here does on our soft keys. If we turn that off, we can see that we see our playbacks are actually recorded on that page, or we can see uh, what we're doing with our uh, frames. I usually like to leave that on so I can see what each, uh, see how many frames I've recorded, as well as uh, maybe a quick description of them. In this case, it used our uh, legend from our palettes. Once we're happy with our frames, we can go ahead and click uh, Finish Recording Frames, and it'll take us it into our effect editor. Uh, so while we're there, let's go ahead and click back over to our uh, slides, and uh, we can talk about uh, everything that's in this window. In the upper right-hand corner of the effect editor, we'll have the uh, Hide, sh uh, hide slash Show Effect button, the Add or Remove Fixtures button. We set our effect uh, uh, speed, direction, phase, spread, and overlap down in the, uh, just below that, uh, will be the uh, editor uh, layer uh, viewer, uh, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, we can collapse our layer. Uh, we can edit it using the pencil icon or edit just our frames by using the pencil icon next to them. We see our frame number and our frames with the description, uh, as well as our uh, start times and our curves. And we'll play with all that uh, in a little bit. Uh, down below that, we have the uh, multiple check marks button that allows us to select multiple layers at, one, at a time. Uh, we can our trash bin to delete a layer, our up and down arrows to move a layer uh, or, or a frame or layer up and down in the stack. Uh, the plus button to add a layer or uh, effect. Uh, to the uh, upper right of the window, we'll have this here. We have our layers, our plays, our play, pause, and restart buttons, uh, and our midpoint of it, our layer. We'll uh, play with all that in a little bit. Uh, down below that, uh, we'll have the uh, uh, the effect layer editor where we can set the size, or excuse me, set the speed, the beats per cycle, the spread, the overlap, uh, reverse it, uh, turn on a phase master, uh, adjust our phase cycles and offset. So in here is a uh, what I usually do in my uh, in person classes, and we make a fly in effect. Uh, so I'm going to leave this up on the screen for a minute, so you guys have a. Uh, can pause it here if you want to see these actual steps or take a screenshot and write it down uh, so you can go back and play with it. Uh, but we'll actually also make this effect uh, live. So with that, uh, actually, I'll take a sip while I leave that up for a moment.
Uh, so let's talk about our uh, effect editor here. Everything we just talked about. See here, we've got our layers, our start and end times uh, through here. And if we do, actually, let's do a split display so we can see everything. And actually, we're going to close our effect editor for a moment and I'll go to intensity and turn the dimmer on in our fixtures so we can see them. And we go to our beam and make them small so we can see them a little bit better. And we see we've got the full version of Capture running up there so we can actually look at it while we uh, muck about in our effect editor. So here we can uh, muck about with our curves. We change the uh, uh, the curve here. We can do it to an ease both, so it kind of eases in and out. We'll do that to all of them real quick. Uh, unfortunately, you can't change them all at the same time currently. Uh, hopefully that gets added to uh, Titan at some point because it is kind of annoying to have to click a whole bunch of frames and change all their curves at once. And we see how it changed it, uh, how it works. Uh, we can change it to the bounce, can get some interesting effects, particularly on dimmer and movement shapes. Uh, bounce can add some funkiness to it. It might be a little fast, so let's actually let's take our BPM and let's shut it down to 10 and slow that bad boy down a little bit. And there we can see that we can see that bounce effect having some uh, effect in there now because it's not moving too fast. Uh, but uh, for now, let's go ahead and uh, that was to show it with quick build. Let's show that uh, fly out that we had just a second ago. So we're going to go ahead and hit clear on here and exit out of everything. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, select our BMFLs. And I'm just going to locate them so they're pointing down real quick uh, to get started. So to start making this uh, fly in effect, what we can do is we can do uh, select our BMFLs and then shapes and effects, keyframe shapes, create. And then we can go to position. And then we can click on our either display here or we can hit the at button on our uh, wheel and then click touch. Do the same thing on tilt. And then we can change our record mode back to a channel and we can add our first frame. And then we'll take our tilt and we're going to kind of blast ourselves out in the face here a little bit. And then we're going to click add frame. And then we're going to click finish recording frames. And we're just taking back here to our effect editor. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and click our plus button down here at the bottom. And then click add layer. And for this layer, we're going to go intensity. And we set our dimmer at full. And then add frame. And set our dimmer at zero. And then add frame. Then we're going to go ahead and hit click uh, finish recording frames. And I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, since you guys have seen everything we're going to do here, we're going to actually we'll change our... our uh, curves to snaps on these for the get the effect the way I like it and we'll go ahead and put up our uh, capture display so you guys can see it at the same time we muck about here and you see that we've made the, that very that quickly made a uh, fly in effect without much uh, hassle very very uh, quickly uh, it was now here's where it gets really nice about uh, the keyframe shape generators. Yes, we made that we made this uh, quickly, and I probably could do it even faster if we hadn't been talking at the same time we were doing it. But we can start uh, changing some of our settings here. So we took, we took our spread, let's change that to a uh, ten, so it's equal to our number of fixtures, and see the changes that it makes uh, that quickly. Did it really just go? Whoops, it didn't take it. That's why. <laughs> Why are you being dumb? Okay, why is it go? We'll do it over here instead since it's being silly with me today. We'll set our spread to 10. And see what it did to our fixtures, uh, how we changed that effect that quickly. Now here's the other thing that makes it uh, kind of cool. I'm just going to... Let's effect editor for a second and reselect all of our fixtures. I don't know why it deselected them. Uh, here's what else gets into. We can just star if we change things. Uh, if we start mucking about with our start and end points, our midpoints, we can see how it changes the way that comes in also. I see that it mostly is to keep our movement down there. We can take it back towards the center. 
Uh, we can also take our frames and say we wanted to reverse this, makes this a fly out instead of a fly in. We can select our key, our uh, first frame on our movement and click our down arrow button. And now we see that we reversed them. So now it works as a fly out instead of a fly in. So we reversed it that quickly. Uh, we can also mess about uh, with our, uh, if we change our over, we can also, uh, uh, since these pictures in a line, uh, direction is not going to make as much of a difference for some of them, uh, but we can also change the effect quickly by uh, changing our direction. Let's go to uh, center out and see what it does. See, now it changed it so we're spreading from the center out. And if we change our spread to, say, uh, let's change it to two. And see how it changed our fly out there. Or we can take our spread back to, I like to show everything with 10 on this one. Oops, not 2, 10, 10. Really? There we go. If we were to change our direction, uh, maybe from outside in, we can see the inward it does to our uh, our effect there. Uh, these ones here, uh, the direction here, we may have to do it from the other end. Uh, the other directions are not going to work well for this particular uh, group of fixtures since they're all just rigged in one line. Uh, perhaps we'll uh, fire up our another show file here in a moment and uh, show uh, the difference on that one. So again, you can do this with a lot more than just uh, two frames like I have here. We can keep adding layers and doing uh, more things to it if we wished. Uh, say that we wanted to actually let's add another layer. And uh, this time we'll do color. So we'll make it uh, we'll do our quick build and we'll do um, <laughs> what do I want to do? Let's do red in our first frame and blue in our second frame and then finish recording frames. And now we can see that our fixtures are fading between red and blue in their frame, but that midpoint doesn't really work for me. So let's actually go with some snaps on these. And let's see here. Maybe muck about with our midpoint a little bit. Let's go actually go this way. There we go. And that makes for kind of an interesting effect. Let's do center out there. There we go. So you can keep, we got uh, some funky there, just like anything else, of course, we can, uh, uh, well, actually, sorry, we should talk about uh, some other stuff in our menu here. Let's make our uh, our mobile display a little larger for the moment so we can see some other things here. Uh, with our keyframe shape itself selected, uh, we can adjust its beats per cycle. Uh, we set it to equal to the, the spread or equal to the number of keyframes. Uh, so we can uh, put a divisor in it, just like we did with regular shapes a moment ago. Uh, phase is another we can mess about. Uh, spread, we've been messing with cycles, so we can have it do it. Uh, uh, let's have it just do this fly out, uh, maybe say do the fly out twice. And then stop. So if we'll uh, put back up our capture display so we can see that. And then we'll restart it using our restart button here in the corner. And we'll see it does it once twice, and then uh, technically that was twice, uh, and then stops. Uh, just like with regular, uh, regular shapes, you can do uh, half cycles. So we did 1.5, and hit enter. We'll see that we get one and a half cycles, and that stops pointing down and off because we did a half cycle, and our pointing off and down is the uh, half cycle. So you can always... Um, that's about with that to get sometimes to get what you're after as well as we can adjust with uh, phase offset and fixture overlap uh, so we set our overlap to 50 and then we'll restart this actually let's go into our cycles and set it back to uh, default value which would be infinity or zero and we see that mucking about with our overlap can give us some different uh, looks to it also I usually I usually don't do a lot of with fixture overlap when it comes to uh, uh, keyframe shapes. Um, we'll mess about with our uh, run on subfixtures since obviously our BMFLs don't have subfixtures. 
So give me one second here, and we'll fire up a uh, different show file and let you guys take a look at uh, some stuff on subfixture cells. And while I'm doing uh, this, please uh, feel free to ask some questions uh, while I get this loaded up. Right, Sam? Okay, we've got our uh, other show file loaded up here, so we'll show it up here on the full version of Capture, uh, as well as the internal. Uh, as we can see here, if we fire this playback, we get uh, the shape effect uh, that I've recorded in the past. So we'll cut down to just our mobile display for a moment. And uh, we'll go to our Groups and Palettes workspace, uh, which actually has a whole bunch of stuff in the way, uh, because it's usually, uh, the show file usually have a second monitor connected. So if we choose our uh, all QPix panels, I know this group is laid out well. Uh, actually, we'll uh, see it, we'll muck about with this layout real quick here. So if we select this group, uh, actually, we don't even have to select the group first. We'll hit group, and then uh, edit group. And we're choosing this group is selected. And we'll edit its layout. We'll see that this is the layout uh, for the fixture group. And it's purposely technically broken. So I'm going to uh, fix it real quick here. Maybe. There we go. Select and arrange to turn back on. And we'll talk more about the layout editor. Uh, oh, golly, I did not want that. When we do Pixel Mapper uh, next week, there we go, fix that real quick. Uh, so now if we uh, hit clear and we go ahead and do our uh, QPix panel and then uh, shapes and effects, keyframe shape, uh, create, and we'll do this one with a quick build also. We'll just do these two colors uh, and then uh, finish recording frames and we'll make our Effect editor full screen, and we're going to set our curves to snap. And we're also going to go to our dimmer and put it to full, and then we'll bring up the uh, full version of Capture so you guys can see it. And you see now it's just snapping forth between the uh, the uh, red and the green. Now, if we mess about with our directions, uh, we can see some of how these other directions uh, how they will play in. Oops, let's actually put a spread of uh, two. In here, I think two will give us something. Really? Well, we'll do ten. There we go. And now we can see how it's spreading amongst the group. Uh, if we change the direction to, say, this one, we can see how it comes across everything. I wonder if, let's see, let's try 20 as a spread. Let's see what that does. There we go. That's actually getting us a little bit better look there. And we can uh, set our, actually set our uh, run on sub fixtures to instead of off, we'll turn it to on by the group. And that should give us a little slightly different look. And we'll change our direction again to center out. And you see how it's spreading out from the center, giving us kind of a targety looking. A thing, for lack of a better phrase. 
or we can set it to uh, this one here. You see it's kind of coming up from the bottom out. Or we can do random, and it'll kind of randomly do the change, which uh, looks kind of funky on our pixel wall there. I uh, see a bunch of questions, so I'm going to snap over here and read a couple. Uh, even though you guys are directing them towards Sam, I'll see what I can do on uh, uh, the full screen here uh, for you guys. Uh, you could try putting uh, a fade in on that uh, circle shape to if you've got you've already got a pan and a tilt running and then you fire in a third shape on top of it basically overrides those two. Uh, maybe a fade in may really help with that. It's also going to remember it's going to go to your uh, position that you recorded with that circle shape. So wherever if your circle shape center point is not the same as it was for your pan and your tilt, you're going to get a, a, a kind of a, a quote unquote jump to that center point uh, to fix that like I said I would put in a fade time on my circle that way it fades into the new position rather than uh, snaps to it as quickly as possible I think that might uh, change some stuff there for you Uh, Connor, I'm not sure. I'm uh, sorry, your question got slightly missed until now. Uh, let's have a quick poke and uh, see if I uh, can uh, see what you're saying. So I've got this. Let's uh, let's change this direction on this from random to something else. Uh, let's do this just because it looks cool. And then we'll go ahead and go to an empty page of faders, and we'll hit record, and we'll select uh, this playback here. For lack of anyone, anyone else, and we'll hit clear. And now when we fire this playback, uh, we can see it's there. When we drop it down, it uh, comes out. And that's just the way these fixtures, I think it's just the way these fixtures are. It might just be the way the, that's because the dimmer should be controlled fully on here. Hmm. Oh, if we do, let's do uh, playback options. Select this cue. I don't want to go to mode two, but that might be the. Uh, what if we do shape size on fader? Actually, let's do speed and the size on fader. See what that does for us. Kind of helps a little bit, but there's still a little bit of that. I think it's also these fixtures. If we barely start fading it in, we fade real slowly. Uh, we get it a little bit. And as we fade it out, 
is less jumpy in. Uh, let's get something else running on those fixtures. So if we do these, and we'll look, whoops, locate not clear, and we'll go to color, and we'll just make it uh, make it blue. So there's some we're fading from. We'll put down another fader. Yeah, I think it's just the nature of the beast uh, for the way the keyframe shape works. We'll have to jump in and out there, Connor. Um, we might be able to, it, I think the only other way to do it is the way I don't like doing things, uh, which is to set it's to mode two. I bet it's going to make the difference here. Uh, so now if I have this one up and have it blue and I start fading it in more, Yeah, I think that uh, mode two might be your uh, fix, your, your fix to make that uh, fade in or out smoother uh, there, Connor. I don't like using mode two for everything, uh, but sometimes it is the uh, solution. Uh, sliding back over, taking a look-see here. I uh, hope that uh, helped you out there, uh, Mr. Connor. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, might be maybe to solve the issue on the jump there. Uh, that uh, uh, arrow. I, I, let me know how to pronounce your name properly, there, brother. Uh, with this. Uh, uh, the sh going between the shapes uh, mode 2 might be the saving grace for that one also again I don't like to use mode 2 for everything as uh, you guys may see from the group I shy away from mode 2 but sometimes it is the uh, the cat's meow to fix the issue so uh, do we have any more questions that are around uh uh, shapes and effects, and uh, the key, or excuse me, our, our classic shape generator and uh, keyframe shapes. We'll get into Pixel Mapper next week. Uh, but if we don't have any questions, any more questions on this one, we might uh, call this one a day. Uh, and we will do uh, our uh, give me time to eat a little bit of lunch, and then we'll do our four o'clock uh, session uh, like we would normally on Masters and. Uh, the save and disk menu. Uh, as we see here, we got our uh, schedule up for the rest of this week. Uh, again, later today, we'll do the masters and save uh, disk menu. Monday, we do key list. Tuesday, pixel mapping. Uh, Wednesday, synergy. Blind mode scene master. Key profiles on next Thursday. And the next Friday, we'll do show import and fixture mapping. Actually, we look like we got uh, Christopher's got something on here real quick. Can you show how you'd set up uh, the group layout? Uh, Christopher, that really depends on what fixtures I have and what group I'm doing uh, and we'll do uh, a lot more than pixel mapping uh, and groups layouts on next Tuesday uh, we'll really get into the uh, group layout stuff because it really matters for pixel mapping uh, a lot more and we'll said we'll play with that then uh, Shane yes you can do BPM on a standard shape generator uh, we'll just show that real quick here uh, We'll have to make one because we switched show files. Uh, so we'll do that real quick here. Uh, let's just make our, uh, we'll take our BMFLs and we'll locate them. And we're going to go ahead and go into our beams and make a zoom them small just so the beams are nice and tight. And we'll take our position and we'll tilt them out some. And then we'll uh, shape to effects, shape generator, create, pen tilt, circle. And then we'll go in and let's throw some spread on there just because there's uh, a little bit of that. Oh, actually, I want to show you how to make a uh, one other thing in the uh, classic shape generator uh, that I didn't show earlier. We actually switch back to our other show file. Uh, and we'll actually, let's, uh, let's just do that first. So we'll go ahead and we're going to exit out of this for a second. And I'm going to switch show files again. Give me one moment here.
Well, the Furl Version Capture Machine is deciding to do its own thing for a moment, uh, so we're going to let that one restart, but we'll continue on in in here. So, uh, to answer Shane's question, can we put a BPM master on there? So we've got a uh, uh, shape here, and actually we'll just move this particular shape to a playback on the uh, same as it has our BPM master here. Uh, so we go and set it, we have to assign the BPM master to this uh, playback. So if we go playback options, select the playback, uh, and then effects and then speed source, and we set it to uh, BPM master. We'll do two. And then exit it. And then refire it, because if you have a playback running uh, and you change its options, you need to refire it. Uh, so now if we tap our BPM, we tap it really fast. We can see that it's trying to keep up with that insanely fast BPM I just tapped, or it's going to go slower if I tap nice and slow. There we go. Always hard to type that slow. Let's see if our capture machine wants to come back online now. One moment. Oops, we also need to turn on the DI. And let's see if we have it now. And we do. All right, so now we got our full version of Capture back up. And uh, we've got, uh, we can see that again, We tap, if we tap fast, it goes fast. We tap slow, it goes slow. Or if we use our multipliers or divisors, we can slow it down also. Uh, so that was on Shane's question there. Uh, so if we, uh, what was the other one? Uh, do, 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 do. Let me see if we can scroll back here properly. Oh, yes, let me show you the one other thing I'd like to show you guys. Uh, it's how to make the classic mixer mixing bowl uh, uh, shape because everyone seems to have a hard time with that one sometimes. And uh, we'll just show it real quick here. So we're going to uh, release any playbacks we have up just by double tap and release real quick. Now, if we select our BMFLs and we're going to throw a locate on them, and then we go to position and tilt, we'll tilt them out a little bit, about like that, and then we go to shapes and effects, uh, shape generator, create, pan tilt, circle. So we got a circle going there, and we're going to set our spread to, actually we'll leave it on one for a moment. Now, to get that uh, mixing bowl effect, what the first thing we want to do is go to our uh, fixtures, so we can select uh, half of them, or if we, if we were smart, we had a group already made for this, but we didn't. And then we go ahead and click direction, and then we're going to reverse the selected fixtures. Now, after you do that, the key to making this work correctly is to hit, uh, go into the edit button here and then click restart shapes. So they both start uh, from the same position. Oops, and actually want to do one other thing. Uh, I want to select the half of them again. And I want to go to uh, offset and set it to 180. So it's 180 degrees out of phase. And then restart my shapes just to make sure it's right. And then we select all the fixtures. Now if I start messing about with my spread, I will do a spread of 10. We can see we get that uh, mixing bowl effect that everyone's always trying to uh, make. It's not hard. You just got to set your, uh, uh, do those, those steps there. And then uh, your spread, I usually find it's best if you do a divisor of uh, your total number of fixtures. In this case, we have 10. So I can do a spread of 5 or a spread of 10 and get stuff looking good. If I do a, try to do a spread of 2, uh, sometimes it works out. Sometimes you don't get quite the uh, look you're after. So just keep that in mind. Like if I did 4 here, everything's all twacked out because uh, 10 doesn't divide by 4 very well. Uh, if I take my spread all the way to 20, we can see that it gets uh, some funkiness going there too. So I just wanted to show that one since everyone's always seems to be asking how to do that. Uh, if it wasn't hard, just remember to select half your fixtures, reverse their direction, and set their offset to 180, and then restart the shape. That's the uh, most important one is to go in that edit menu and restart shapes uh, to get them all starting from the same spot before you record it so you can actually see what it's going to look like. 
So if we did record this to an empty playback, like here, and then we hit clear and fire it, we see that we still get the same uh, look we had running before. So let's see here if we got any more uh, questions before we call an end to this particular stream. What's the easiest way of running keyframe shapes with uh, multiple instance fixtures? I end up unfolding them, uh, but assume this isn't the right way of doing it. Uh, that is one way of doing it. There's no right or wrong way of doing things, as I always like to tell everybody. Uh, you can, in the effect editor, if we... Uh, well, I don't have the show file with uh, multi-instance fixtures open, but if we do... Uh, we'll just make one real quick here just by selecting our BMFLs and then do shapes and effects, keyframe shape, create, and we'll just use our uh, groups and palettes and turn it, leave it on a quick build. We'll just make dump, 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 and finish recording frames. Uh, down here, we've got the buttons run on sub fixtures, uh, either off, on, uh, to use the layout from the group or, or use the, uh, the order, fixture order from the group or use the fixture order uh, linear, so the, the numbers that they're in. Uh, those are two, two other ways you can do it, or unfold. Either or works just as well. Uh, so there's there's that. Um, again, not hard, just a way, different way of doing it. Um, you know, uh, there's no right way or wrong way to run the console. There's my way, there's Sam's way, there's your way, uh, but they're all not wrong. Uh, it's just sometimes some some ways a little easier than others, uh, and it also really depends on the effect I'm trying to get. So, uh, with that for today, we're going to go ahead and cut one on this one, so I can get a little bit of lunch in before we do our uh, standard afternoon session. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for coming out again. Uh, and uh, feel any questions you have, go ahead and uh, be either put them in the group or comment on this, and Sam and I will try to get back to it uh, and answer you and help you out. Uh, but we'll call that a day for Mission Control, and I'll see you guys uh, a little bit later this afternoon to go over Masters and uh, the Disc and Save menu. Don't forget, you can always find out what our sessions are on the avalites.us page to see our training events there. Uh, also, you can see that uh, what Avalites uh, is doing or other trainers uh, in the UK are doing, as well as my classes should be listed there also. Uh, and uh, we'll put both those up on the screen so you can see them. And here is our plan for the rest of, uh, for next week, since there's only one more day left in today. And we'll get into all that other stuff there, and, and we'll have a fun time with it. And uh, we'll go with that. Again, thank you guys for coming out, and see. hope to see you all again at the next class. Thanks, and bye. Oh, I have to point out, not one mistake today. You guys didn't, have, didn't even get to take one drink. Now I've jinxed myself for the later class. Ha, ha, ha. Thanks, guys.